For the past few years I have suffered bouts of anxiety, which have resulted in periods of sick leave from work. I don't know how they started, but the everyday stress of a job requiring a high level of concentration, a lack of support when it was most needed, long hours and commuting have contributed. Every day is a battle. And this affects every aspect of my life. This feeling of perpetual stress is not anxiety anymore. It's tiredness, it's the inability to sleep, it's bitchiness. I've said before that I stay up till half past two, three in the morning because I can't sleep and then it impacts the next day. Sometimes I'm not up till 10, 11, and I feel as though I've lost my day. And it's just like a, a vicious circle, this round and round and round every day. It started with the burnout at work. Days turned to weeks, turned to months. I'm trying to cope with stuff on my own. Traveling three hours a day. I don't know if anyone even noticed. But I was burning up inside until there wasn't much left. And that's when I first saw my GP about it. It's over two years ago now. I was signed off work for five weeks and attended a CBT course in Uxbridge. And it was great. It was something which helped to stabilize me, people who understood. But were the same old problems still going to be there afterwards? I can't go into the details, but what came next was even worse. And it resulted in a panic attack one day in the office and I sat down at my desk and I didn't know how I was going to get through the day on my plan that I have for my for my job sheet of paper with a plan on it with a, a flat plan I drew a circle and turned it into a pie chart eight sections for eight hours thinking the only way I can get through this day is to colour in each section of the chart as each hour passed but I only got as far as switching on my computer because what happened next I've never experienced before it was like the sky, or the ceiling, or just everything just collapsed in on me. I don't think I can talk about the next bit, but skip forward, I saw the doctor that evening, and I was signed off work again. I was then put onto antidepressants, tried to come off them after a year, and it was a complete disaster. All the anxiety came back. So I was told to go back onto the medication. Turns out I'd um, come off them too quickly. So just before Christmas last year, I saw a doctor again and he said, do it slowly double the amount of time 
So over the course of the next two months, I cut down the medication until I was taking one tablet a week for the last two weeks. I've been off them since then. And I feel as though the way I felt when I was on them and off them has been no different. So were they actually any good? Most days I think that the only solution is to change the trigger points. Wrangling over what I should do is the situation that I face in the months to come. We might not always want to go out for exercise or even go to the gym. So sometimes you have to take it in-house and do it at home. Today I'll be using a foam roller. It helps with easing tension and soreness and it helps relax the muscles a bit. So I've used this at the gym before. So let me show you how it's done. So this is pretty easy to use. You have your feet planted on the floor and then you position your back to lay on top of the roller. Then you push backwards to its opposite end. It will give pressure and kind of provide a bit of a cushion and a bit of resistance to your back. It does feel rather good, but my back is quite achy, so I think it is doing its job. It depends how often and how frequent you want to use it in one go. I think I like to do this about 10 to 15 minutes. And it does work on all the tension and knots in your back. So I really do recommend doing this I don't think I've done this for quite some time. <sighs> there are a few options to using this roller. You could use it on your side as this lady's doing. You could use it to do sit-ups like this guy is doing. You could also use it like this. I don't know what position this is. Maybe some form of yoga. So I think I might give one or two or three of them a shot. Let's see how that goes. Okay, this is weird. This one feels like I am walking 
on my hands but in a really weird position I can't explain it it's a form of stretching on your thigh muscle I suppose and maybe your arms Okay, the last one, I think he was trying to use it to do sit-ups or something. Alright, getting quite sweaty here, so I think it's pretty good effort that I've made on my part and let's keep it going. Now, don't forget to subscribe. Glaucoma is a common eye condition where the optic nerve, which connects the eye to the brain, becomes damaged. It's usually caused by fluid building up in the front part of the eye, which increases pressure inside the eye. Glaucoma can lead to loss of vision if it's not diagnosed and treated early. I've been having regular glaucoma tests on and off for several years. The optician has referred me after regular eye tests because of higher than normal eye pressure. Mostly this has been caused by my overactive reflexes while undergoing what I call the eye puff test. But after my most recent test, the optician said they had spotted a slight irregularity while viewing the back of my eye. I'm not quite sure what to expect today. Um, I did have a glaucoma examination a few years ago, the last time uh, I had one. Um, I've been told to give it two hours, so I expect there's going to be a lot of tests. And my eyes are very sensitive, they always have been. I always say I've got like a guy reflex in the eyes. So. Some of these I'm sure I'm not going to look forward to at all. I'm not going to go through with them that well. It is worrying because I have noticed difference in my eyes. I guess it's just because I'm getting old, but you know, they, they do get watery, especially in the mornings. And then they get dry when I'm on the computer for ages. Um, when I had my eye test at the opticians, um, a couple of months ago, I did get one pair of new glasses with the uh, the special blue tint for working on screens. They've helped. There was only a slight deterioration in my vision in one eye, um, so that wasn't that wasn't too bad. But it was because of what the optician seemed to find uh, that day that has led to me going to this appointment.
Well, um, my appointment's over. As you can see, my eyes <laughs> a little bit golden orange. Um, I'm going to wipe this off and I'll talk to you in a second. I've still got some of the very fetching eye dye. Um, <laughs> And uh, slightly blurred as well, um, but that's to be expected. Anyway, it's good news, I think. Um, my air, um, eye pressures uh, were normal. Um, my field of vision was normal. They think that it's because when I am at the optician and they do the eye puff test, um, because of my overactive eye reflexes, um, it increases the pressure by five points or so because I'm squeezing. Um, it lets water into the eye and that increases the pressure. Um, but they're going to crunch the numbers and send me a letter uh, with the results. But the, the initial reaction um, is that uh, everything's okay, which is great news. I was quite worried, actually. Um, and they're going to monitor things uh, for the next, well, they'll, mon they'll monitor me every year, I think. So, yeah. Um, if you haven't seen an optician recently, even if your eyesight's perfect, make sure you go because Glaucoma is a very serious condition and it can lead to loss of vision. And it's something which an optician may not particularly be able to, well, they might pick it up, but they'll certainly pick up signs uh, that, that glaucoma is a possibility and uh, you would be referred to your local um, glaucoma clinic or hospital. Make sure you do that. Meanwhile, I'm going to uh, just enjoy seeing people's reaction to my eyeliner. Viewers of our opposition show Morning Live will know that each day there is a strictly fitness routine and it just happens to fit in perfectly with my day because around about that time is when I'm getting up and I need a little bit of fitness. So I thought that we would emulate them today and try our, our own little strictly fitness routine. So we've got three routines, um, some of them they do on the show, well, I think one that we've made up ourselves. Um, but it just gets your body moving and isn't that what fitness is all about? So the first one, Paul, I think is, and we're going to practice them first before we're we go to the session. Do the yeah. right knee down. Right like knee. This. Like this. Go back up. Then the same action with the left. Okay. So we go like that. And we go like that. And we do that for, what, four routines. Um, two times each leg or four times? Two times each, each leg. So that's four in total. Yeah. Okay. So the second one. We'll use our hands, so we go like, uh, uh, extend the right hand, bring it in, and then extend the left hand, bring it in, and then, so it's kind of like a rotation. It's like a traffic signal. Are we signaling for trains or something? And maybe. we'll do that for, what, ten maybe of those? So, so five, five of each? Okay. Yeah, I think that's good. And then the last one is easy one for me. I'm not very coordinated, but I can run on the spot like this. And we'll just do that for a few seconds. And then we'll do another full routine of it. Yeah. Okay. So I think we need to, let's get started. And uh, we'll hit the music and here we go. Let's get started. One, two, three.
Now, of course, you don't want to overdo it. So, go at your own pace. And if I drop dead in five minutes, well, it's been great doing the show. Oh, no. Paul, you might have to do it all on your own. Okay, I think I can go one more. Traffic signal. Trying to run to the end of the song. God, I hope I chose a short one. Oh my god. I hope it recorded it. We're not doing this again. <laughs> I think that was a good session. <laughs>